So the question is, sometimes we feel we're in local churches that are missing parts to the body, and we're suffering because of it. And what do we do then? And I think that is the point of Ephesians chapter 4, that God has a, a holistic view of the church, and the Lord Jesus wanted to make sure that, say, a young believer who was in a new upstart church where they hadn't developed all their gifts, or a Christian was in a local church that had fallen into disarray and through various reasons was not functioning properly, that there would still be a safety net. And this safety net was the wider church. So here we have men who are given to the whole church. So how we ought to thank God for this? There are Christians in Muslim villages the only believer that they know within hundreds of miles. In fact, I was having evangelistic services up in New England. A man drove 150 miles to hear the gospel. He had never heard it before. And he said, I'm seriously considering becoming a Christian. If I do, I'll be the only one I know. So, what do people do in that situation? Well, God has these wonderful ways of reaching across the barrier of the local church and infusing into these local believers the benefits of the universal church. The original design was that the evangelist pastors and teachers of Ephesians 4 were available to move within local churches. And so here's a group of young elders, for example, and they're just seeing a work started, and nobody in town knows how to do marriage counseling. What do you do? Take an online course? Well, what you had was pastors. You see, these three gifted groups are the evangelist is not here so much preaching the gospel, although obviously he does. Here he's equipping the saints to be witnesses. And so one skill set that every believer needs is the ability to understand the gospel, to give his own testimony, to share the gospel. And so evangelists should be regularly gathering with Christians and saying, here's what a good testimony sounds like. Here are some good gospel verses to memorize. Here's how to start a conversation with a lost person. Here's how to pray for the lost, right? Giving us fundamental skills on how to be witnesses. That's the role of the evangelist. The role of the pastor is to equip the saints to care for one another how to give an apology, how to restore somebody who's growing cold. You see somebody wandering off, how to get them back in among the flock. How to visit in a hospital room, how to visit in an old folks home, how to, how to comfort somebody who's bereaved. Those are the skills that the pastor is supposed to be equipping the saints with. Now, they, he's not a local church man. I mean, he's functioning in some local church somewhere. But his gift is beyond the local church. He should be seeing this happening. Instead of inviting a pastor to come and preach on Sunday, there's a place for that. But what he ought to be doing is, in small groups, saying, let's go out and visit. I'll show you how to visit. I'll show you how to counsel a married couple having struggles, or whatever, right? So that's the work of the pastor, the work of the teacher, is not just to get up and preach. He's to equip the saints and to advance the, well, the spiritual well-being of the local church. Instead of getting with some of the local teachers and helping them uh, break into new areas of study and help them understand how to teach Bible prophecy, and then they get up and do it, and everybody's encouraged, like, wow, that was great, right? So that's God's design. So when in a local church we feel we're missing pieces, thank God for the whole church. And these gifts are whole church gifts. The, the teaching is not just for our little group of churches. These gifted men were for the whole church. And thank God for people, people who found ways to break out of their little church ghetto and provide spiritual well-being for the whole body. That's how it's supposed to be. Without any compromise, we are able to do that. So that's, that's, I think, at the heart of the Lord Jesus here. He's the one who gave a group of gifted men to the churches whose gifts are wider than the local church and are able to help. They work in the context of local churches 
and they help build up the local believers. So when our local church feels like we really don't know how to share the gospel, we don't know what to do, what you should have is somebody come in and in, in a different context say, all right, let's, let's do a little role playing here, all right? I'll be, I'll be the lost person or I'll be the saved person, you be the lost person, and, and we'll do a little role playing. We'll see how this works how to start a conversation or whatever. Hi, those are the kind of practical skills that we need. And that was the design here. When somebody invites me, I say, well, what are you hoping to get out of this? What, are you, what do you feel the needs are in your local church? And they say A, B, and C. And I say, well, I'm not your man, but I'll tell you who can come and do that. He'll be able to help you with that. That's the design that God has built, not just the local church gifts, but whole church gifts as a backup plan, as, a, as an enrichment plan to help us uh, strengthen the work of God in our local church.